really cool mausoleum back there. I'm at Holy Cross Cemetery and I'm in section M trying to find the grave of Robert McGowan. Robert McGowan was the main director of the uh, Our Gang shorts in the uh, 20s and the 30s. He was beloved by all of the people in the gang. They all loved him. And as adults, they, they loved him as well. I saw a TV special where they all had reunited and they were saying to him how much it meant to them to be taught by him and all the things that they showed that he showed them how to do and uh, the training that he would give them based on his years of work as an artist and so we're gonna go try to find him right now as far as cemeteries go I have to say I am super impressed with the way they handle everything here as far as the uh, the grooming and all that the the landscaping because I mean if you look at these graves and see how perfectly manicured the grass is and I don't see that a hell of a lot in a lot of cemeteries like you'll, you'll find freshly cut grass and it looks nice but very rarely does somebody come in there with a a hedge trimmer and trim out the uh, like right over here especially you can see just real nicely done I mean look at that you can set your watch to that line it's ridiculous Robert McGowan beloved husband and father 1882 to 1955. He definitely was like a father. He was like a father to all those kids in the Our Gang series. They always have such great things to say about him and loving things to say about him. He truly shaped everything that we saw. And when I see some of those old shorts, I can't believe some of the stuff that he was able to do back then, especially not having any any source of reference really other than maybe cartoons. And even cartoons weren't as sophisticated as as uh, what he was doing. But I love this guy. I love you, Mr. McGowan. Thank you for everything you've done. Just beneath this beautiful fountain, um, I'd say about maybe seven rows in, seven or eight rows in, is the grave of the Tin Man, Jackie Haley. For all you Wizard of Oz fans. Even closer to that little grotto area is the man himself, Count Dracula. Bella Lugosi. Truly the most frightening image of Dracula. I mean, he didn't really need a lot of makeup or. Sorry. He didn't need any makeup or anything like that to, to do it. I mean, they, they probably put some, some uh, stage makeup on him, and that's just about it. Everything was in his performance. And then he was actually buried in his, his Dracula outfit. So, um, I don't know, five, four to six feet below, below us is a Bela Lugosi skeleton <laughs> wearing a Dracula outfit. It's, um, sorry, this just, just occurred to me right now. <laughs> so, this one over here with the flower is Count Dracula's grave. And we follow it down the same row. All of a sudden, we have somebody who you would not be th even associate with Count Dracula, but it's uh, Bing Crosby. An easy way to find Bella Lugosi's grave is to look at the grotto and then look for like almost like a like a space between a bunch of graves. See how there's that space there? Just beneath that space is where Bella Lugosi is. Oh, and there's a little, I don't know what, I think it's for flowers, just right in front of it. But um, his is really one of the only graves I see around here that has one. Um, so I think that that is a good way to find it as well. 
and like I said Bing Crosby is just a few stones that way and then Jackie Haley is just over here Just past the grotto slash cave area, um, there's another little garden. And if you come over here, uh, this is where Sharon Tate is buried. And everybody remembers Sharon Tate from the horrible uh, murders that happened, the La Bianca and the, and the Tate murders. It's hard for me to say who my favorite is because I love them all so much. But man, this guy has made me cry. <laughs> Came to the Little Rascals as a replacement for Farina, Alan Hoskins, who's also one of my favorites. I love Farina. He was a big part of the show for a long time. He started aging out, so to speak. He was getting too old to play the character that he had played since literally he was a baby. So they were looking for another little boy to replace him. And they came across Matthew Beard. Matthew Beard. Originally, it was going to be called Hercules, but Hal Roach decided to change it to Stymie because he was constantly uh, getting in his way and, and stifling on purpose, sort of playing little pranks on Hal Roach. And that's how he became Stymie. There was an episode where I remember he saw a dog catcher coming around looking for stray dogs well stymie didn't want the dogs to be taken so he took the dogs and hid them somewhere but then the rest of the gang didn't realize that he had taken the dogs to save them they thought that he was stealing them so they confronted him and he was crying he says i was trying to save him and when i saw that i just started crying i was like oh my god i love this little kid I just love him. And he, you know, he's done some of the funniest parts. There, there's an episode where he is across from a, an old comedian who's playing a character on the show. And he says, the old man says, they were taken by malaria. Meaning, you know, obviously they were killed by disease. Matthew Stymie didn't understand that. So he says, well, where'd she take him? And he goes, who? They were taken by malaria. He goes, I know, but where did they take them? <laughs> where did she take them? As if malaria was a lady that took them somewhere. <laughs> Poor guy got into drugs and some had some problems later in life. And, you know, I think all of us can relate to having problems that have pushed us over the edge. <laughs> Poor Matthew was definitely one of them. We all cave to our emotions and sometimes they're too much for us to handle. You know, he never blamed um, Hollywood for his drug addictions though. He said that it was because of living in the ghetto, readily available, the depression sets in. I can't even imagine what living in a ghetto was like back then. Now to find Stymie, the best thing to do is to look for uh, this house right over here and also this this uh, light post over here. Because he's almost directly in front of the light post. Uh, maybe about, I'd say about 
a hundred feet away from the light post is where Stymie is. And if you uh, if I pan around over here, you'll see uh, there's a market there. It's kind of hard to describe things in this cemetery. If you're wondering why the, the earth is so brown right here and dried up, it's because during the drought seasons in California, sometimes these cemeteries uh, don't water. Sometimes I wonder, if, is that really a drought thing or is that just them trying to save money or something? Anyhow, so there's that house, there's that house. He's sort of in between the two of them. 